Hi, hello, I'm Mickey Zeta, and this is Sunday Night Wine with Mickey. I'm going to move over here a little bit, because when I sit like that, look, it looks like I have Mickey Mouse ears. Those two dishes that are up on that shelf uh, are exactly directly above my head, and I don't like that. And you know what? With my name being Mickey, I never liked that mouse very much. Hi, Jan. Good to have you here. So this is, uh, look at this glass. It says celebrate, celebrate all around it. And that's how I feel. I am celebrating because life is so good. Yeah, there's crap. Yes, there's things that go wrong. Every day is not perfect. But guess what? There is a reason to celebrate no matter what. And what I'm going to talk about tonight is really an important an important thing to think about for celebration, and that is not to let other people steal our power. Don't let other people take away our positive energy. We have that, we are great, we're doing terrific, we're cruising along, everything's wonderful, and guess what? Along comes our abuser, or along comes a negative friend, or a negative family member, and boom, they drop all this negative stuff on us, don't they? It just like enfolds us, it uncovers us, no matter what we do, and, and I'm going to suggest some good things to do tonight, but it happens. It happens all the time. So, hi Al, good to have you here. So what I'm going to talk about is sometimes people, um, they're just destructive and they're mean. And um, when I taught sales, I used to say there aren't that many negative, nasty people in the world. They just move around a lot. <laughs> well, guess what? Most of us who are in the Surviving Abuse Network community, we married those guys. And there may not be that many of them. Actually, there are a whole bunch of them. But my point is that they have so many of the same traits. They seem like they are the same people who just move around a lot and get in everybody's way. So what we, what I'm talking about tonight is to remember that that negative behavior and the, and the, the negativity, the, the drama, the trauma, the junk that they throw on us, it's not about us. It is not about us. It's about them. And we know that on some level, but they are so good at putting it on us like it is our problem, that we are the problem. We tend to begin to believe them and we, intent, we unintentionally absorb some of the stuff that they, that they throw at us. Actually, I absorbed a whole, whole, whole bunch of it and it's possible that you did too. But we know that it's not about us. We know that it's about them. So, um... The thing is they need to get rid of that pain. They need to get rid of their pain. And where do they throw it? Where do they inflict it? Where do they push it? They push it on you and on me. And that's just not fair. But that's what narcissists do. That's what abusers do. And so what's... Um, the problem is that when they're throwing words and they're throwing things and they're, and they're creating... Um, they're creating hell in our lives, but their pain, but they're creating pain in our lives. What do we do about that? How, how do we keep in mind that, look, this is not about me? You know, even when we're divorced from these people, men or women, whoever your abuser is, once we're divorced from them and we're gone from them and we've left, even if our kids are grown or we don't have kids with them, there's still times that we run into them or we encounter them and they're still able to cause us pain, aren't they? You know, we say, I say, I've said for many years, I'm not going to allow this anymore. I don't want this pain in my life. I don't want to be um, affected by this anymore. But still, sometimes in reality, sometimes my abuser is in my life because we have a, a, a grown child. Sometimes it's in my head. I've been divorced from him for 17 years, almost 17 years, but still a lot of the things that he did, a lot of the things that he said, his hurts that he threw onto me are still there. And I play that movie over and over in my head. Does that sound familiar to you? I, I bet that it does. So even, even when we're gone, that emotional abuse and, and some of the physical, the bruises heal, but the emotional part stays. So um, they still hold a lot of power over us. And, um, you know, sometimes for years, like I said, I've been gone a long time. And still, sometimes those things that he played in my head, they're there. And sometimes I, I fantasize, you know what, if I would have just said this, or next time that happens, this is what I'm going to say. And I get it all worked up in my head. But guess what? It doesn't work because they don't care. They don't care what you say. They don't, they don't, they don't, it doesn't matter to them. You know what I did once? <laughs> Years ago, right after, I, I probably hadn't been gone more than a year or two. And um, uh, I was still having a lot of um, 
contact, physical contact with my ex-husband, my abuser, and uh, he was in my head because it was all fresh. It was all new. I'd been there for 53 years. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff is stuck in your head after all that time. I bought a voodoo doll. <laughs> I bought a voodoo doll and I and and when I would think of things in my head or when things would happen in reality I would stick pins in that doll you know what it didn't hurt him I'm sure it didn't hurt him at all but it made me feel better so if you're newly out of a relationship buy a voodoo doll and use it or make one make one it doesn't matter whatever you have to do but um, what it does is a, a relieve. It, it's a it's a release. You know, you know, you're really not hurting the person. You're not causing him any pain, and you don't probably want to because you know how much that hurts. You know how much that pain hurts you, and it doesn't go away. Same thing for him, but a voodoo doll. Ha! Hey, that's a great idea. We um, we can fantasize about things we're going to say. We can make plans about what we're going to say. We can change our attitude. We can change our uh, way of thinking. But guess what? He is not going to change. Your abuser is not going to change. So you can fantasize about it, but it's not going to change them. If you can use your fantasies to change you, that's a great thing. But it's not going to... It's not going to make a difference. You can't say the right thing. You can't love him enough. You can't hurt him enough. There's nothing you can do that's going to change your behavior. They just, they don't change. They just don't change. It's very rare. I, I've never heard of a single abuser who really literally changed. So here's the thing. What we have to do is realize that the only thing we're responsible for is ourselves. You've heard me say that before. And if we don't change, nothing changes. So I'm going to give you some suggestions, just a few suggestions that maybe will make a difference for you. Um, and they sound a little bit Pollyanna when you've lived in abuse. They sound a little Pollyanna, but um, I think maybe you can do it. It's not easy. It's not easy to change how we perceive our hurt. It's not easy to change how we perceive our abusers because there's a lot of history there. And that history keeps coming back, coming back, coming back. That's what we remember. That's what we, re we react to. So first I'm going to say, uh, uh, one of the things you can try is to have do an, obje uh, an objective analysis. Okay, that's even hard for me to say because <laughs> we are not objective. We are not objective. Uh, Christy ask do they do they treat anyone respectful I doubt it I doubt it there's there's nothing to understand about a narcissist they don't treat anybody respectful because the only thing that matters to a narcissist is himself or herself whoever is the narcissist that's all that matters and you know what they do they have to win so they don't care if they step on you or anybody else it doesn't matter they're not going to change the only thing that matters to them is that they win and if that means stomping on you and hurting you and and uh, breaking your your spirit and your soul that's all they care about winning winning is all that matters so anyway do an objective analysis and that's hard for me even to say because it's so hard to even think about doing instead of reacting create a space we call it a gap create a space where when something happens rather than re react the way you always do figure out a way to respond so if um, if every single time he says this or that or he does this or that and it, it you feel your blood pressure go and you're 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 angry right away try not to do that try to create a little gap and say all right wait a minute how can I look at this differently I know that he's not responding to me he's not mad at me really he's just taking his anger and his hurt and his frustration out on me I'm being his his rug I'm being his football that he's kicking around and um, but it's not about me and if you can create that gap and realize create an, an objective analysis and just be able to say you know what um, Pretend that you're a counselor and counsel yourself. Create that little space where you can look at it from an objective perspective. And no, it's not about you. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, they're idiots. And sometimes when we don't get mad and when we don't respond the same, they get madder. So if you're in a situation where you can just get away from him, that's what I would suggest you do. Create an objective analysis. The next one is, is identify... Um, the impact there are a lot of nasty people out there. They just um, it's not just your abuser There are a lot of nasty people that we encounter uh, There are a lot of narcissists and and narcissist is a new word kind of a relatively new word But my point is that um, maybe you have a sister who's just a nasty person. She's just not friendly. So um, How can you create space so that that doesn't affect your life? 
And that's probably true in an abuser too. Is there a way that you can create space? Just because you're invited to a family dinner and you know he's gonna be there, you don't have to go. You don't have to go. Just because your sister lives a, a few blocks away from you and she's mean and nasty and she undermines you all the time and calls you names and she's not a nice person, you don't have to spend time with her. You don't have to. It doesn't matter if she's your sister. It doesn't matter if that's your um, um, a, a former husband, your ex-husband. That doesn't matter. You don't have to. You don't have to be there. You don't have to participate. You can um, identify the impact they have on your life and choose not to participate. You can just say, I'm not going to do that. And don't let them affect your day. Just say, you know what, this is my life. I am creating a gap. Use the same gap. And say, I'm, I'm, I'm creating some space here. I don't want to be around you. In fact, you could even do that. Don't be around them. Choose not to be around them. And um, you know what I said before. Narcissists have to win. Abusers have to win. And that's part of their problem. But when we're dealing with those kind of people, we have to give up our need to win. We have to give up our need to be right. So yeah, that's really hard. That is really hard, especially when you know they are wrong. I've already said, the problem is not you. They're making the problem you, but you are not the problem, they are. So it's really hard not to want to point that out. But just, you know what, sometimes all we need to know is that that's in our heads. That fighting to win doesn't actually do any good. What it does is just create more hurt, create more aggravation. Um, and nobody's nobody's ever going to win when that's the situation. Don't, don't feel like you have to let him win. It's not about that. It's about doing what you need to do to protect yourself, to protect your emotions, to protect your physical body. And, um, and just feel like, all right. My win is that I'm getting out of here without getting hurt anymore. Not that I have to prove to him how wrong he is. That's not it. It's that I'm going to protect me. That's my win. And I'm going to suggest that you have a mantra or a saying, uh, an affirmation that you can use. And, and um, when your abuser is telling you nasty things, or even when you're playing that stuff, you know what? I haven't seen my abuser in a long, long time, but still he shows up in my head and he's saying stuff to me that he said for years and years and years that I bought. I don't buy it anymore, but there it is. There it is and it plays. So you know what? I come up with a mantra. I go to, I go to a place in my mind where I can settle down a little bit. Uh, I like to say cancel, cancel, because that eliminates a lot of that negativity. Just say cancel, cancel. And then I find a, a smile, I call it a smile exercise. What is the best way? What is the easiest way? What is the way that anybody can do to increase positive energy? It's to smile. Just smiling. When you're talking to somebody on the phone, you can tell if they're smiling, right? You don't have to see a smile. You can feel it. It's amazing energy. So create a smile exercise. Even if you're in front of your, your abuser and you're in the middle, of this thing you can smile in your mind you can smile in your mind and you can say whatever your positive affirmation or your your smile exercise is and it might be something simple as um, I matter more than winning this argument or um, I know that I'm on the right path and that my life is going to be wonderful so just think of a smile exercise, something that will make you feel good. It, it, ha it needs to be short, something short that you can remember. And you smile and you say it. And if you can't smile because that's just going to piss him off more, smile in your head and say that mantra. It'll help you. It will absolutely help you. And it'll help create the gap so that you don't react, so that you don't react and you have a choice to respond. You remember that old song, um, about an ant with a rubber tree. I guess the ant thinks that it can move a rubber tree plant and uh, everybody says that ant can't move a rubber tree plant, but it does. It does move the rubber tree plant. So um, I think it's about high hopes. You, The ant had high hopes that he could do it and then he did it and then he did it. That's what I'm talking about. When we allow other people to come into our space, take our positive energy, beat us down emotionally, physically, and, um, and just creating negativity that, that resonates in our minds for hours, days, months, years. We have a choice. We have a choice to let that go. So think about a rubber tree plant. Uh, turn turn your, your problem person into a rubber, rubber tree plant and know that you can move them away or you can move away from them. So um, negative behavior, um, it feels like it comes at you. It's not, it's not, it's insipid. It's just insipid. But we have a choice. We have a choice of allowing it to take our joy, to take away our um, happiness, to take away our, our power. 
it's taking away our power. Our positive energy goes away, our power goes away, and pretty soon we're milk toast. So don't, you spend a lot of time doing that. Don't do it anymore. Don't do that anymore. Decide to take your own power back and be ready the next time somebody's intent on, on upsetting you or setting you up, <laughs> upsetting or setting you up. Be prepared with a mantra, with a smile exercise, with knowing that how you can win is getting away. So those are all important. Turn their negative energy into your positive power. You can do that. This is something that we have, we have the power to do in our lives and that's what I suggest. So that's it for tonight. I hope that you uh, took notes or that you watch again and write some notes down. I'm Mickey Zeta. My website is survivingabusenetwork.com, survivingabusenetwork.com. There are lots of videos there. And uh, Christine said, I felt like a robot. I know. I know that. I get that because we're so programmed. They program us so much, but we don't have to allow that. We don't have to allow that to continue. Even if you're still living in abuse, you can find ways that you can break that cycle. And, uh, and as you start to change, pretty soon you're going to get strong enough to say, I don't have to live like this anymore. But don't do that until you're ready, until you're absolutely ready. I'm going to tell you that I wrote a book, and the book is called Looking Behind Closed Doors. The subtitle is Domestic Abuse. If we don't change, nothing changes. And it's every single little story has a suggestion, something that you can do that will... Um, that will change your life, that will give you more power, give you more encouragement, give you more positive energy, and more ways to, um, to stand up to those negative things that are running around in your head, even if they're being told to you directly right now, or if they're old, 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 old stuff and it's still in there and it's controlling you. You have the power, you have the right, and you, have the, you just have to be willing to do the work do the work. So the book is Looking Behind Closed Doors, and I suggest you get it. It's on, it's on Amazon, it's on paperback, and it's Kindle, so there's a couple different ways you can get it. And uh, apply, the, apply the lessons. They're lessons I use to become who I am. And I can honestly say, I love my life. I absolutely love my life. And I don't resent, I don't regret uh, the years that I spent in domestic abuse because I'm able to use those lessons now to become the person that I am and to help other women become who they are. So thanks for being here. I'm Mickey Zeta. Here's a, here's a, a cheer to a fabulous week. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday evening and that you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. And apply some of the things that I've talked about today. Apply them to your lives and, and email me or text me or, or put on my Facebook pages how you uh, have applied them to your lives and what's happened. How have, how have they helped you? How have you? How have you changed and gained your power, taken back your power? I'm Mickey Zeta. Thanks for being here. Go to my website, survivingabusenetwork.com. Buy my book, uh, Looking Behind Closed Doors, and I look forward to seeing you here on Wednesday night, Wednesday night, live with Mickey. See you then.